Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to the 64th Annual Damon College Commencement Ceremony. I'm John Summers from Channel 7. I'll be your Master of Ceremonies tonight, and it's an honor to be with you. Out of respect for our graduates and their distinguished guests, at this time we're asking everyone to please turn off their cell phones, their pagers, and their beepers. And for those of you still using pagers and beepers, what's it like back there in the 80s? Here's a spoiler alert. Next decade, the Bills are going to go to four Super Bowls. The ceremony is going to last approximately one and a half hours, and we understand this can be a long time to sit if you have children, and they may be very uncomfortable. Well, there are couches out in the lobby where they can rest without disturbing the solemnity of our occasion, and we thank you for understanding. Now, in a few minutes, the official ceremony will begin with the formal procession. What I'm going to do is to describe the various constituents of the processionals as they enter the room. But first of all, here's a little preview. Heading the academic procession will be the academic gonfalon, or banner carriers, who will enter in the two center aisles, and then they'll form a single line <clears throat> right here across the stage. Now, these gonfalons represent the various academic fields of study and academic degrees. Each banner will be carried by a department chair. On each one of the gonfalons, here's what you will see. The name Damon College, very proudly displayed in blue and white, and the department name on the traditional color for that academic field of study. Following the gonfalons, two academic marshals will lead our graduating students into the room, once again, in the two center aisles. The academic marshals are Adrian Williams, Sr., academic advisor, and Dr. Blake Thurman, esteemed faculty member and former director of Student Retention Services. Unfortunately, I dealt with the director of Student Detention Services mostly when I was in school. But marching next to the marching next then will be the Damon College faculty. They will be led by Dr. Mary Lou Russin, department chair and professor of the nursing department. The faculty will march according to faculty rank and then years of service followed by the administrators. We're asking that you pay attention to the academic regalia, and I'm talking about the robes, the caps, and the hoods, because the colors lining the academic hoods that they wear draped across their shoulders represent the academic field of study and the academic institution where each professor's degree was received. Now, academic regalia often reflects unique institutional styles. Finally, following the faculty and administrators will be the platform party. They're the officials who will be seated right here on stage. The faculty senate uh, vice president is Dr. Greg Schutz. He will lead the platform party bearing the ceremonial college mace. In medieval times, the mace was carried to protect a person of dignity, which says to me it must have been some kind of a weapon. I hope we're not expecting any trouble tonight. I haven't been in a mace fight in a long time. In the spirit of this tradition, Dr. Schutz and the Mace will lead the platform party headed by Mr. Dale Demyonic, who is chair of the Board of Trustees, and Dr. Gary A. Olson, president of Damon College. The other members of the platform party are the trustees and officers of Damon College, and our commencement speaker tonight, Dr. John Conley. Ladies and gentlemen, families and friends, it is now time to begin the ceremony. Please welcome the academic Gunfalon Carriers.
Let's welcome the academic marshals leading the graduating students of Damon College, the class of 2015. And now the Damon College faculty and administrators will be led by senior faculty member, Dr. Mary Lou Russon, department chair and professor of nursing. Now let's welcome the Faculty Senate Vice President, Dr. Greg Schutz, leading the Trustee Chair, Dale Demyonik, and President Gary Olson, and they will be followed by the Platform Party.
As the Vice President of the College Faculty Senate, I hereby declare the 64th graduate commencement ceremony of Damon College in session. On behalf of the faculty, I'd like to take, I'd like to offer my congratulations to our graduates, their family, and friends. The faculty have truly enjoyed working with you during your time at Damon and wish you much success in the future. I now ask that everyone please stand for the Canadian and American national anthems. Please be seated. I would now like to introduce the chair of the Board of Trustees, Class of 1979 alumnus, Mr. Dale Damianic. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I welcome you, the graduates of 2015, your families and friends. You, the graduates of Damon, are the reasons that the trustees meet, deliberate, and act. As graduate students, you are our reward. You are our job satisfaction. The college is very proud of you and all that you have accomplished. On behalf of the trustees, thank you for a job well done. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the president of Damon College, Dr. Gary A. Olson. Honored guests, graduates, friends, and relatives of the graduating class of 2015, welcome. We are gathered this evening to honor our graduates for their achievements at Damon College. This commencement ceremony is rooted in rich tradition and symbolism. The awarding of academic degrees dates back to the 12th century. The mace, as a symbol of institutional authority, is a tradition from the 13th century. 
and the medallion and chain of the presidential office originated in the Middle Ages as a symbol of self-governance and academic freedom. This afternoon, we carry on that centuries-old tradition. I'd like to begin by introducing the trustees of Damon College who are in attendance. The trustees are the governing body of Damon College. These are individuals who selflessly give their time and effort to oversee our efforts to make Damon the first-rate college it is today. I will ask each trustee to stand as I call his or her name and to remain standing, and please hold your applause until all of the trustees in attendance are standing. The chair of the Board of Trustees, Dale Demyanik, class of 79 and partner at Lumsden and McCormick. The secretary treasurer, Richard Day, partner at Hiscock and Barclay. Thomas Bridges, partner at Fleischmann and Muggle. Catherine Campbell, class of 84 and former senior vice president at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Western New York. Robert Corr, president of Corr Companies. Donald Hutton, director of New York, New Jersey Rail. Gail Mitchell, assistant U.S. attorney for the Western District of New York. Sister Dorothy Mueller, class of 66 and member of the Sisters of St. Francis. And also with us this evening is former trustee and chair of the Board of Trustees, Peter Hunt, chairman and CEO of Hunt Real Estate Corporation. Please help me recognize and thank the distinguished trustees of Damon College. I'd also like to recognize the executive administrative officers of Damon College. I'll ask each to stand and remain standing, and again, please hold your applause until all are standing. Richard Schott, Vice President for Business Affairs and Treasurer of Damon College. Michael Brogan, Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the College. Rich Ann C. Mankey, Vice President for Institutional Advancement. Gregory Nair, Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students. Bobby Mills, Special Assistant to the President for Government Relations. Bridget Nyland, Special Assistant to the President and Director of Athletics. Kelly Duran, Chief Information Officer. Kathleen Boone, Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs. Sherry Gustis, Executive Director of the Office of President and Board of Trustees. Please help me recognize and thank the talented administrative officers of Damon College. At the heart of Damon College is an accomplished and dedicated faculty. Our faculty spend countless hours ensuring that our students receive the finest education available, and they also are distinguishing themselves nationally through their groundbreaking research and creative works. Their commitment is one reason why the graduates here today are so accomplished and so well prepared to take on the challenges of a competitive world. Will the faculty and emeritus faculty of Damon College please rise and be recognized? Equally accomplished and dedicated are the staff and administrators of Damon College. They too work tirelessly, often behind the scenes, to ensure that our students receive the attention and support that will give them every opportunity to be successful. Would the staff and administrators of Damon College please rise and be recognized? The graduates of Damon College hold leadership positions in nearly every state in the nation and around the world. They're attorneys and judges, nurses and surgeons, teachers and professors. Our alumni are active, enthusiastic, and generous supporters of the college, and their support uh, helps to make Damon the first-rate college it is. Would the alumni of Damon College please stand and be recognized? Finally, I'd like to thank the members of the Commencement Committee in organizing this special event. 
The executive committee members are Sherry Gustis, Chair and Executive Director of the Office of the President and Board of Trustees. Tiffany Brigon, Associate Registrar. Sabrina Fennell, Director of uh, Academic Advisement. Susan Girard, Director of Health and Insurance Services. Jacqueline Hearn, Bookstore Manager. Irene Holohan Moyer, College Registrar. Chris Malik, Director of Student Activities. Doris Murphy, Executive Director of the Office of Academic Affairs. Dr. Blake Thurman, former Executive Director of Retention Services. Marjean Weiss, Director of Conferences and Events. Please help me thank them and the many other behind the scenes workers uh, that helped make this event so special. Graduates, you belong to a very special class of citizens. Only one quarter of the people in our nation earn a college degree. In other words, three quarters of, of all people do not go on to earn a college degree as you have. And a much smaller number go on to earn an advanced degree as you have. You have earned a high distinction and are part of an educated elite. Now while you've demonstrated mastery of your academic area of study, Perhaps the most important ability you've acquired is a habit of mind, the ability to think critically and analytically about the world. This is an ability that will help you make wise choices for the rest of your life. And this ability may well be the greatest asset that you take away with you when you leave here today. Graduates, you're members of a very special college. And I feel confident that no matter what challenges you experience in your life, you will continue to meet those challenges with wisdom and integrity. Now, graduates, this is, of course, a very special day. You've worked many long, hard hours uh, to arrive at where you are. I ask that you take a moment right now to reflect just how far you've come. You have every right to be proud of your accomplishments, and everyone in this room is proud of you as well. But think about it. While you invested much hard work in your ed education over the past several years, you did not arrive here without help. Your success, which we're celebrating today, was a collaborative effort. I'd like to ask the faculty and staff of Damon College once again to please rise. Faculty and staff, help me thank them for your success. I'd like to ask another group to rise. Would our graduates, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, wives, husbands, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunts, uncles, cousins, partners, and significant others, please rise. Let's thank them for their help as well. Graduates, good job. I congratulate you and wish you well as you go forth to experience greater challenges than you've yet faced. Please don't forget the skills you developed here as you become the successful individuals I'm certain you will become. Uh, don't forget, of course, Damon College, but certainly don't forget your professors. You are now and forever part of the Damon community. We hope to hear from you often over the years to come, and I'm certain that you will continue to make Damon proud that you are one of our graduates. Graduates, go out and do good in the world. Congratulations. As Vice President of the Faculty Senate, it is an honor to introduce our distinguished commencement speaker. Dr. John J. Conley is President and CEO of Castle Conley Medical Limited, a New York City-based publisher of guides that assists consumers with finding the best health care. The company publishes a variety of books for consumers, including the Top Doctor series that features the popular America's Top Doctors Guide, as well as America's Top Doctors for Cancer and Top Doctors New York Metro Area. He is also chair of Castle Connolly Private Health Partners, a concierge medical company. As an authority on identifying top physicians, Dr. Connolly is a frequent guest on television and radio shows such as Today, Good Morning America, 
2020, and many others. He has served for a decade as president of New York Medical College, the nation's second largest private medical college. He is also a fellow of the New York Academy of Medicine and the New York Academy of Sciences and is a director of the Northeast Business Group on Health. Dr. Conley has served with a number of boards for various organizations, including the American Lyme Disease Foundation, of which he is founder and past chair, and he is chair emeritus of the Culinary Institute of America. Currently, he's a board member of the American Swiss Foundation, Baker and Taylor, Dearborn Risk Management, Air Methods, and the Hudson Group Advisory Board. I am pleased to introduce Dr. John J. Conley, who will deliver the 2015 commencement address. I can take this off. You have to leave it on, unfortunately, for a little while longer. Thank you very much, Professor Schutz, Dr. Olson, trustees, distinguished government leaders, guests, faculty, and especially the graduates of the class of 2015 and their parents, friends, and family, thank you. It's an honor to be part of this commencement and the reason is, it's one of the most important events in your lives. So hopefully the thoughts that I share with you in my brief comments will be of use to you in any career or field you choose for your life's work. I'm not going to try to inspire you as I would an undergraduate audience. You're already obviously inspired, or you wouldn't have the dedication and commitment to achieve a graduate degree. Now, interestingly, a few years ago, when I was a commencement speaker at my alma mater, Worcester State University, a newspaper reporter quizzed the commencement speakers of a number of colleges in that area and asked if they remembered who spoke at their commencements. You'd not be surprised to learn that few, in fact, I think none, could remember the name of that person. I was one of those. So I will not be disappointed if you cannot remember me in 10 years or even in 50 years, but I do hope you remember a few of the things I say today because I believe they'll help you in your career and your life. I want to address an issue that will be a significant one for you. I do not have the solutions for all the challenges it will create for your generation, but by simply being aware of the problem and the issue, you may be able to create your own solutions or at least cope somewhat better with the, with the challenges it engenders. And for some of you, it may provide career opportunities. The issue you will face and the problems it will create is me. Yes, me and my generation. And it is a set of issues and problems that exist not only in the United States, but throughout the world, especially the developed world. And why are we a problem? We are because the demographic changes older people have brought about and are bringing about today and in the next few decades are going to reshape the economies and cultures of nations and of societies and in ways that will have a significant impact on your generation. Now I can almost hear you thinking, oh my God, we're going to have to listen to this old guy talk about old people. Well, that's not completely accurate, although somewhat accurate. What I'm going to talk to you about is your career in life and how it's going to be different than generations before you because of old people. And there is a new life stage emerging in our culture, in our society, and being aware of it can help you prepare for it. First, to quickly set the stage, a few facts. As late as 1930, America's older population numbered fewer than 7 million less than 5.5% of the total population. Today, one out of every nine Americans is old, over 65. Another former youth turns 65 every eight seconds. And those over 65 now exceed 35 million, a number about to explode now that 77 million baby boomers born between 1946 and 1964 surge towards retirement. 
Each year, more than three and a half million boomers turn 65. In fact, the fastest growing segment of our population in the United States are those 80 and older. Now, so what, you ask? The so what is that you are expected to support them. That is the social contract that we have created with Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and other public and privately supportive programs. And you might ask, haven't we always done that? Yes, so far, but because of increasing longevity, the balance between those who support others through their work and taxes and those who are supported is changing dramatically. The problem then becomes the number of working age U.S. citizens compared to the seniors their taxes are supporting. This is what is going to change and affect your lives and careers dramatically. In 1950, there were about 7.2 people age 20 to 64 working age for every person age 65 and older. By 1980, that ratio had dropped to 5 to 1. It is now about 4 to 1. However, by the year 2050, when your generation is in the 60s and 70s, it will be only 2.1 to 1. In short, every two people will be supporting a senior. Think about it. Now, that may have been feasible if we built huge savings as a society over these years, but that is not the case. Today, the, uncurrent, the current unfunded liabilities of Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security exceed $100 trillion. Exceed $100 trillion. That's a hard number to grasp. In fact, if the government confiscated the entire gross domestic product of the country for the next 10 years, we couldn't pay off those liabilities. Put another way, if we paid back $100 million a day, it would take 287 years to pay down the national debt. Now, some have suggested in the future the U.S. will be a nursing home with a few guns and tanks. That's not a very rosy picture, but it is the reality. And those figures are not based on any speculation about the future. They are facts that have already been established in births. Now, before I explain how you might cope with all this, let me cheer you up by saying that of all the nations in the world, we may be in the best situation. Most of the nations, especially the developed nations of Europe, are even worse off. The average dependency ratio, workers to retirees in the European Union is already down to 3.5 to 1 and is heading to 1.8 to 1 by 2050. In Italy, it is forecast to be nearly 1.5 to 1, Germany 1.6 to 1, and Japan is even worse shape at 1.2 to 1. In the U.S., primarily because of immigration and an above uh, replacement birth rate, we are in far better shape. Yet the increasing number of seniors and decreasing ratio of workers to retirees, as well as the huge debt burden we carry, suggest changes in your life and in your work. Now what are those changes and how do you adapt? First, for years, we have stressed the notion of early retirement. Forget about it. Pension funds are stretched today and we will be even more inadequate tomorrow. People are going to work longer simply because the social and financial support for retirement will not be there. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, the life stages that have existed for the last 50 to 75 years are changing. In the 17 and 1800s, we had three stages in our lives. Childhood, work life, old age and infirmity. In the early 1900s, that changed. A fourth life stage, adolescence, emerged. With the advent of mandatory school to the age of 16 and the enactment of child labor laws, children no longer went to work on the farm or in the factory as soon as they were capable. Adolescence became that stage between dependent childhood and work or college. And today, a new life stage is emerging, and it should be one that you plan on for your life and your career. Mark Friedman, 
one of the nation's leading social entrepreneurs, labels this stage the encore stage. This new life stage is emerging for many people in their 50s and 60s, brought about by a combination of early retirement from one's principal job, increased longevity, and the better health of seniors, as well as the financial need. And it's a stage you need to plan on. When people began to retire in their 50s and 60s, and then lived into their 80s, it created 20 to 30 years of a period when one had to figure out what to do with one's time, and particularly today, how to support oneself and possibly a spouse for that period. The result was that many people began taking up second careers in order to keep active, to be entertained, and to generate money to supplement retirement income. In these second careers, many people also decided to work at what it was they really wanted to do during their lives, but perhaps being committed to one career path and a steady income stream, they could never be adventuresome enough to take the risk. But that is changing. Enabled to take risks because they have a modest retirement income, people are embarking on second careers they find more fulfilling, even if less financially rewarding. And that is something you made to think about and plan on, not in your 20s or 30s, but perhaps in your 40s, 50s, and certainly in your 60s. And despite the negative factors that contribute to this new stage, it could be something very positive, an opportunity, an opportunity to do something different in your work life, perhaps something more challenging, more fulfilling, more exciting, just something different, an encore. Think about it. Plan on it during these coming decades of building your first career. Plan now for what will be your second career, your encore career. Good luck, Godspeed, and thank you, thank you very much for letting me share this day with you all. Thank you. Damon College values personal initiative, civic engagement, and the entrepreneur spirit. We value hard work and the personal and professional success that derive from it. We value giving back to society and to causes that promote these values. These are all values exemplified by Dr. John Connolly. Dr. Connolly personifies the spirit of entrepreneurialism and of selfless uh, philanthropy. He's a true role model for our students and to all of us. And so Dr. Connolly, we'd like to honor your life's achievements by presenting you with an honorary doctoral degree. I now ask Dr. Connolly and Chairman of the Board, Dale Demyanik, to please approach the podium. By the power vested in me by the Damon College Board of Trustees and by the Regents of the State of New York, I hereby confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights and privileges associated with it. Congratulations to you. Please help me thank him and his family. Thank you, thank you. Dr. Connolly, you'll always be a member of the Damon family. You're always welcome on campus, and we hope you come by often. We have another honorary degree this evening, and that is for Peter F. Hunt. As a respected business leader, philanthropist, and advocate for the Buffalo Niagara region, Peter Hunt's resolute commitment to excellence has greatly enriched Western New York and Damon College. With tremendous vision and integrity, Mr. Hunt devoted nearly three decades of service on the Damon Board of Trustees, and during this time he gave eight years of vital leadership as board chair. For years, Mr. Hunt has been a boundless steward for education. His immense generosity has been far-reaching in advancing Damon and our community as a whole. He has drawn great praise and recognition for his tireless efforts as a leader in our region. 
Mr. Hunt, we would like to honor you and your life's achievements by presenting you with an honorary doctoral degree. I ask that you and uh, Chairman Demyanik please uh, come to the podium. It's two Damon board chairs. By the power vested in me by Damon College Board of Trustees and by the Regents of the State of New York, I hereby confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights and privileges associated with it. Congratulations to you. Peter would like to say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Olson and Mr. Demyanik. This is a great honor for me, and it's been a great honor for me to serve this, this wonderful institution. I realize uh, this is an honorary degree, but I'm still tempted to call myself doctor from this point forward. Um, <laughs> just tongue in cheek, of course. But anyway, um, by virtue of this degree, I, I do share one thing with you graduates, and that is uh, that we are now members of the uh, the Damon community. I'm officially a member of the Damon community, which, which I, I value greatly. And that come, with that comes responsibility, which I, I know you share, and that is responsibility to represent this institution in everything we do through our character and service to society. And I know I take that responsibility very seriously, and I hope you do as well. Thank you very much for this honor, Dr. Olson, and, and the Board of Trustees. I appreciate it very much. I look forward to serving the school more in the future. Thank you. Buffalo Philharmonic Choral Group will now perform Let the River Run. I now have the pleasure of introducing Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the College, Michael S. Brogan, who will present the candidates for degrees, and President Olson, who will confer them. Members of the Board of Trustees, President Olson, and esteemed faculty, 
I have the honor of presenting the candidates hereafter to be named who, having completed the requirements, are eligible for doctoral degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Damon College and the regents of the state of New York, I welcome to the company of scholars the candidates hereafter to be named and confer upon them doctoral degrees. Doctor of Nursing Practice, Rosemary Craven Hansen. <laughs> Ventricia Harris Victor. Jody Lynn Reagan. Chad Andrew Shepard. Doctor of Physical Therapy. Jerrica Lynn Marie Adderhold. William Anthony Denz, Jr. Kevin Ryan Esperti. Thomas Michael Romano. Paige Francis Ronka. Melissa Ann Singer. Mark David Pellerin. Matthew Joseph Fitzpatrick. David Nathaniel Baldinson. Joseph Gilbert Jalos. Lauren Michelle Bellotti. Janeth Kimberly King. Michelle Lauren Kujawa. Alexa Christine Amato. Michelle Ann Butcher. Sarah Renee Burke. Andrew Peter Gawren. Ryan Gregory Boggs. Caitlin Gloria Kavinen. Joseph Paul Gravino. Amanda Renee Batterson. Leslie Star Han Davis. Robert William Statton. Kyle Christopher Brownscheidel. Nicholas Renee Salinas. Amber Lynn Benito. Leanne Louise Brewer. Caitlin Marie Napoli. Clay Ethan Case. Joshua Leon Kibler. Ahmad Alloway. Joshua Tyler Butler. Stephen Joseph Austin. Joanne Stephanie Cruz.
Cole Douglas Sanders. Marika Ann Von Lewin. Laura Beth Magore. Kelsey Nicole O'Leary. Rachel Glendine Ottaway. Kirsten Marie Renzi. Amanda Marie Grace. Emily Kate Ohol. Jacqueline Sarah Davidson. Christina Marie Lynch. Jennifer May Seeger. Michael Dennis Nickel. Robert David Stewart. Sarah Lynn Velarde. Craig Peter Young. Matthew James Bela. Rebecca Lynn Wetlofer. Zaki Uden Mogul. Jeremy Patrick Long. Courtney Ann Tellerico. Ryan Luke Stoltzfus. Evan Walsh Mazer. Bethany Suzanne Marchese. Yasemin Razavi. Angela Niki Sood. Tanisha Shaylin Wheatley. Members of the Board of Trustees, President Olson, and esteemed faculty, I have the honor of presenting the candidates hereafter to be named who, having completed the requirements, are eligible for the degree of Master of Science. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Damon College and the Regents of the State of New York, I welcome to the company of scholars the candidates hereafter to be named and confer upon them Master of Science degrees. Athletic Training. Cleon Clayton. Kyle Daniel Clifford. Jared Daniel Contreras. Carrie Lane Guerin. Danielle Elizabeth Dorshak. Jeremy Christian Plotchko. Education. Chelsea Ann Holtham. Monica K. 
Warich. Chelsea Christine Rock. Marlena Lynn Rosenau. Sarah Ann Luparello. Mary Elizabeth Hauke. Rose Zambacadiz. Executive Leadership and Change. Amanda Margaret Barton. Scott James Svetkowski. Paul Michael Coleman. Kathleen Ann Field. Kathleen Ann Field completed the requirements for her degree in nursing, executive leadership and change, but sadly lost her short but heroic battle with cancer before this ceremony. Kathleen was an administrator at Roswell Park Cancer Institute, and in her memory, they have established a scholarship in her name for nurses who plan to pursue this degree as well. A true testament to her legacy of leadership. Today, her husband, Ron, will accept a diploma on her behalf. Kim Elizabeth Kerrigan. <laughs> Catherine P. Kasauchi. <laughs> Linda Karen Hubbard. <laughs> Jennifer L. Eberhardt. <laughs> Tammy Lynn Hibbert. William Henry Colors. <laughs> Kathleen Ann Curtis. <laughs> Sinitra Trené Ferguson. <laughs> Mary Kelly Rehack. Maureen Whittish. <laughs> Global Business. Heidi Ott Cheston. <laughs> Cynthia Monaco. <laughs> Heather Marie Pequeen. <laughs> Ling Xiao Wong. Nursing. Kristen Danielle Feast. Kara Siavin McCarthy. Devin Powers. Jeanette Nicole Evans. Parveen Kaur Minhas. <laughs> Megan Kim Riccobono. <laughs> Hu Ching Ko. <laughs> Shika Zhao. Elizabeth Ann Zinda.
Maria Shaluhova. Jennifer Ashley Reynolds. Jamie Lynn Glinicki. Catherine Elizabeth Flower. Wendy Sharita Kai. Kelly Ann Duffy. Janelle Elizabeth Calhoun. Rachel J. Jordan. Brittany Laree Adams. Nora Salah Alasolatine. Salufa Hakami. Juhur Saad Altamani. Layla Elzara. Abdul Abziz Mofti Alamerwan. Jabran C. Mankus. Deborah Ann Gambini. Samantha Noel Morali. Laura Elizabeth Cirillo. Ashley Noel Zocano. Physician Assistant Studies. Rachel Kara Schwartz. Anna Asaribakova. Samantha Kate Black. Carrie Suzanne Bozer. Kristen Ann Spano. Robert Matthew Cronin. Michael James Gallagher. Robert E. Baker. Audrey Lynn Anzelic. Jenna Renee Dowd. Lauren Ashley Phillips. Aaron Marie Sullivan. Ashley Ann Jazirski. Sarah Marie Barts. Nicole Renee Patterson. Caitlin Elizabeth Cuffney. Kelly Kar Tomaszewski. Dual degrees, Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, Accounting. Sean Michael Snyder, cum laude. Don Hang, summa cum laude. Jenna Lorraine Rates, summa cum laude. Chelsea Christine Miller, summa cum laude. Amanda Maria Norberg. Kevin J. Smeeter, summa cum laude. Kyle James 
Kapcharowski, magna cum laude. Colleen, Megan McCarthy, magna cum laude. Angela, Irene Vacante, magna cum laude. Aaron Charles Newman. Matthew James Wooden. Global Business, Aaron Edward Davis, cum laude. Physician Assistant Studies, Caitlin Marie Sheeler, cum laude. Maria Ann Schiller, cum laude. Kelsey Ann Bizan. Jennifer Lynn Wojcik, summa cum laude. Janelle Catherine Schwabka, summa cum laude. Rachel Ellen Goltz, cum laude. Emily Ann Kowalski, cum laude. Monica Lynn Metzger, magna cum laude. Darcy Ryan Nevereth, cum laude. Jacob Hunter Holmwood, magna cum laude. Rebecca Kathleen Hess, cum laude. Bethany Lynn McClinsey, summa cum laude. Ann McIsaac Nykirk, Magna cum laude. Stacy Marie Carter, summa cum laude. Krista Marie Belisai, cum laude. Brittany Lee Crawford, magna cum laude. Marcella Lee Ethington, magna cum laude. Allison Adele Guys, summa cum laude. Mark David Teraldo, summa cum laude. Dominic Mark Sienfrini, magna cum laude. Samuel John Ali, summa cum laude. Carolyn Ann Ivanko, cum laude. <laughs> Tiffany Louise Phelan, magna cum laude. <laughs> Kayleen May Coleman, cum laude. <laughs> Abby Lynn Burdick, cum laude. Aaron Midler, summa cum laude. Nicholas Richard Sherry. Cassandra Lynn Dabian. Joshua E. Radecki, magna cum laude. Amy Michelle Wilson. Kaylee Lynn Argentari, cum laude. Megan Elizabeth Olson, cum laude. Margaret Erin Duffy, magna cum laude. Morgan Elizabeth Kilcullen, cum laude. Jenna Elizabeth Tobias, Cum laude. Andrea Marie Alguer. Katerina Mariah Kristen, Cum laude.
Vice President Brogan will now announce changing of the tassels. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. and change your tassels. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few minutes, the Faculty Senate President will declare this ceremony officially concluded. We're asking that you please remain in your seats until the platform party and the graduates have left the room. Diplomas for the May graduates will be distributed immediately following this commencement ceremony. Graduates, you are to proceed directly across the lobby to the Mary Seton Room to receive your diploma. Any diplomas not picked up today will be mailed to the graduates. On behalf of President Olson and the college, we have to remind you the 33 remains closed from downtown to the Parkside Interchange. The turtles are gone, but they left a mess, and the city is going to have to take all night to clean it up. And we're very sorry about that, but it's back to business as usual tomorrow. Uh, congratulations to all the graduates. Uh, your families and friends are very proud, and we want to thank you for your attendance and cooperation, and thank you for making me a part of your event ceremony. So, as Vice President of the Faculty Senate, I hereby declare the 64th Graduate Commencement Ceremony of Damon College concluded. Thank you.